Hello, today I have two RAV Power USB power adapters. These power adapters cover the mid size 65 watt up to the 120 watt range. They're desktop style adapters. I will have to see if either of these adapters have advanced features, safety listings, and there's a bonus item at the end, so stay tuned. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how each one stacks up. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Patreon is now live as well as the super button. Thanks to my current patrons. First, let's get these power adapters opened up. The packaging is simple for these power adapters, cardboard boxes. Not bad recyclable at least. The boxes do state an input current which is high for the 120 watt adapter and typical for the 65 watt adapter. The power adapters each come with a power cord since these are desktop style adapters. The power cords are removable and replaceable so optional to use international plugs with these. They show in the user manual various different plug ends. The 65 watt user manual is fairly simple but it does give some specifications for the device. As usual, the website provides far more information. In this case, the RAF Power webpage is actually quite comprehensive in showing what this device can do and can't do. They do explicitly state no programmable power supply mode or PPS mode, and the port sharing is also on the site, so you get an idea of what happens with multiple ports plugged in. The 120 watt adapter follows similar suit with a fairly detailed user manual and the webpage providing the bulk of the information when it comes to what devices it can charge and how the power is distributed between the ports. This, again, is probably the most comprehensive listing I have seen for one of these with the cans and cannot do's listed right in plain text. The infographics are nice, but not enough sometimes. Here are the adapters. The 65 watt version has four ports, two USB-A and two USB-C. The ports are on the end of these adapters with the AC line cord on the opposite. We can see on the end of the device there's a safety listing though, TUV, and I don't see any Department of Energy 6 mark for efficiency, so we'll have to check that out. The 120 watt version is essentially the same, but is physically a lot larger. This version of the adapter also has a safety listing, but not much else for marks. I guess they like to keep it simple. And on to the weights for these power adapters. The packaging for the 65 watt adapter weighs 60 grams. The 65 watt power adapter weighs 243 grams. The 120 watt packaging weighs 91 grams and does come with a USB-C cable. The power adapter weighs 412 grams. Here they are in comparison with the Anker 120 watt GAN Prime adapter. These are both heavier than the Anker 120 watt and the Bassius 120 watt adapters by quite a lot, but this does include a power cord. Size wise, these adapters are different and in a more elongated shape versus the usual brick. The 65 watt adapter, once plugged in, uses about 0.11 watts of idle power. Not the least, but not the most. This adapter does have a little LED to indicate that power is plugged in, but it's almost impossible to see it. It's behind the USB ports. This adapter offers the fixed output voltage modes of 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt USB power delivery 3.0 modes, but it doesn't have any PPS variable output voltage mode. The USB A and C plug and unplug tends to require renegotiation of the voltage, which is typical. The 65 watt adapter is missing something though, and it looks like all the adapters in the 65 watt class seem to not bother with power factor correction. The power factor correction is a technique to consume AC power as efficiently as possible. The higher the power factor, the lower the comparable current, and therefore the lower the loss in wires and transformers that supply your power. At this power level, I guess it is deemed unnecessary, but I'd still like to see a power adapter with this. When we take this 65 watt adapter up to the full power level, we can see the consequences of that low power factor in the graph of the alternating current power consumption. These lines should all look like sine waves, the yellow line. But instead, we have large peaks, which means a large spike of current is being used at the peak voltage, then nothing over the rest of the cycle. This is inefficient when consuming AC power. The 65 watt adapter had a very reasonable overload condition. This is the limit of power output before the device safely shuts down. I was able to push this adapter to 71 watts before it tripped on overload. This adapter did recover to 5 volts after removing the overload condition. The 120 watt adapter, once plugged in, uses about 0.23 watts of idle power. This is over the line of the DOE6 efficiency, and this is typical of 100 plus watt adapters, but in this case, it's over the line. The adapter does have a little LED to indicate that the power is plugged in, and it's fairly reasonably bright. This adapter offers the fixed output voltage modes of 5, 9, 15, and 20 volt USB power delivery 3.0 modes and no PPS modes. The 120 watt adapter at 50 watts still doesn't have power factor correction, but as soon as this adapter gets to 55 watts, 
Eureka. Power factor correction kicks in and suddenly the stats look a lot better. This is a very high power factor enabling point since most of the time with devices plugged in the adapter will be in a far lower power state. This varies a little from the Koval adapter which is extremely similar but not identical. The 120 watt adapter has better port sharing versus the 65 watt because it has more power available in its budget. It looks like when you connect a higher power consuming device to one of the ports the other port offers all the modes but it reduces the power level. Only one port at a time can do 100 watts with two USB-C ports, it's 60 watts per port. Any USB-A and C plug and unplug tends to require renegotiation of the voltage, which is typical. When we take this 120 watt adapter up to the full power level, we can see the power stats start to look quite good. This device is fairly efficient and can correct the AC power. When we look at the graph of this comparing before and after the power factor correction kicks in, we can see the tail of two adapters creep in. Same as previously, but now we can see this adapter treating the AC in two ways. You can see the current peak significantly decreases, and in fact, this device is moving less current in the wiring under the higher output power mode versus the lower. This is sad when the technology is in the box but not being taken advantage of. The 120 watt adapter had a reasonable overload condition. I was able to push this adapter to 110 watts before it tripped off on overload. The adapter did recover to 5 volts after removing the overload condition. The device has barely stayed within the basic requirements of the USB power delivery specification for DC output voltages. The 65 watt does okay on idle power consumption. The idle current distortion or noise is low. When we get into the active tests though, it becomes obvious this power adapter doesn't have active power factor correction we mentioned earlier. Unfortunately, this is typical for 65 watt adapters, and this hurts the performance. Still on the hunt for a power adapter with correction at this power level. The 120 watt adapter is another one of those tails of two adapters. In this case, the idle and high power states look okay, and everything in the middle, where you would be probably using this power adapter most of the time looks awful again. So unless you are hammering this adapter with at least 55 watts all the time, this is not the best choice. In comparison with other power adapters, these adapters take the lower spots for their respective tiers. The 65 watt adapter isn't really bad, but I am starting to think that all 65 watt adapters are bad and should be skipped for something a little more capable. The 100 watt adapters steps out a little bit by offering the power factor correction in some modes, giving it a decent boost in overall performance, but it is still a lower performer offering than a lot of the other power adapters in this class. This is one of the lowest performers for the tail of two adapter styles also. It does crush the ones that don't have power factor correction though. On the idle graph, these power adapters are okay. The 65 watt and the 120 watt are not the worst offerings. The 60 watt met the Department of Energy efficiency requirements for an idle state for a power adapter, while the 120 watt is just out of range for that. On the average power consumption graph, the alternating current power quality of these devices takes the lower spots. These adapters scored worse than the adapters of similar power levels. These adapters don't top the lists like the full-time power factor corrected models from Anchor and HyphenX and a few others. The 65 watt class of adapters should just be avoided in general, still. A 65 watt power adapter is not great. The price point is about $40, which is reasonable. And I'm fairly sure this is a clone of the Koval power adapters, but it lacks PPS. It has a safety listing and meets the basic requirements of a power adapter. It's fairly large for a power adapter in this class though. The LED is almost not visible at all. The 120 watt power adapter is also not great. This looks also like a Koval clone, and I think there's a few others out there too. This adapter also lacks PPS. The price point is about $90 if you can find it, which is expensive. This adapter uses a little too much power on idle to meet the Department of Energy requirements. In conclusion, these power adapters are not going to be taking home any awards. The RAV Power brand is a minimum level power adapter that has a safety listings and meets the minimum requirements for power efficiency and idle requirements, but they don't go above and beyond. The 120 watt power adapter has power factor correction, but it's only used in modes above 55 watts, so you can get stuck with this one. The AC power and DC power stay within reasonable limits though. Time to apply the stickers. These are tested and on the database, but not winning any awards, while also not being terribly offensive performance wise. Thanks for watching. Next week, the plan is to do some 140 watt PD 3.1 power adapters. These also have a special cable to tolerate the higher voltage. There's a calendar on the website linked in the description of upcoming videos, so check it out. I have many more of these power adapters to get through, so many more videos in the future. Today's bonus item is also from RAV Power. And this is the Blitzforce power adapter purchased for $15, also 65 watts and safety listed with a rather low PQS of 83. Somehow, it isn't the worst still and is a very reasonable price. Thanks again, and until next time, goodbye.